Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights, here with Daniel Ertl from CBCS. Beckett's grading of comic books arm and uh, to great success and doing that for a number of years now. This is not comic book insights, it's sports card insights, but Daniel and I will bat around some similarities. Thanks sponsors, certainly Beckett uh, Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. And do you go by Beckett CBCS or how do you say that? Typically, we just call it CBCS. Okay. Anyway, a brand within uh, the Beckett Media uh, family. And then ComC.com, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions, Huggins and Scott Auctions, Tops, Panini, and Upper Deck. So several sponsors have uh, some interest dabbling in comic books. It's a hobby that's existed right alongside sports cards. In fact, it's more akin to that than coins or stamps. So Daniel Ertl, welcome to the show. Thank and you. tell us about how you came into the Beckett family and kind of your background and what you're excited about. Because uh, I think uh, it's a great time to be a hop. Sure. Yeah. I was going to college in Florida, working a college job at a grocery store. And I saw an ad listed for positions at CBCS Comics, which was a new grading service taking a spot where CGC usually only had. Were they the only game in town or they had a 90% market share at that point? Yeah, they were the definitely the biggest uh, game in town. Yeah. There were other smaller companies that uh, have been grading, but nowhere near what CGC is. Yeah, I saw an ad. I said, I collect comic books. I like comic books a lot. Let me apply for it. So I applied <clears throat> and I started as somebody who put notes in on books, gets all the information for it, stuff like that. I would stay late after work and I would train with Steve Borok. And over the years that eventually <clears throat> gave me the experience to start grading books and finalizing books. Now I'm the head modern uh, comic guy at the company. I deal with, with books from 1975 and the other guys deal with the older books. Okay. So a similar break in terms of vintage or golden age or those kind of things. In fact, in fact right. comic books in many respects led the way. Were comic books the first ones to identify it's not a rookie card or a rookie comic, but these first appearance kinds of things. Didn't that yeah, I mean, a rookie card phenomenon? So, or was it yeah, so that's something that used to really drive comic books a lot were first appearances. Your first appearance of Spider-Man or Batman. The first appearance of Superman is still the most expensive comic to date. I think it has a record sale of like $3.2 million for that one book. Not so much anymore, you're saying? It's, it's still something that's big. Every time there's a new first appearance, it pops a book for value. We're seeing that a lot with like Spawn now. He's introducing a lot of new characters and Spawn's become popular again like it was in the 90s. But the big driving thing now is movies and TV shows. You can have a character that no one cared about and overnight that book goes up instantly if he has a scene in a movie. But do they go to the first appearance or just any appearances of that? Yeah. A recent example is The Vision, which has always been a popular character. He was in the movies. But recently in the, the Scarlet Witch TV show, yeah. One of his other costumes makes an appearance. So now that book is popular. His first time in that costume got, you know, popular overnight. Does that mean a lot of them get submitted? Is that what's yeah. happening? Yeah, it's almost you'd almost see it uh instantly. The episode happened where he's in that costume and then the next week we have tons of these books coming in with that appearance. That was a quarter bin book before. It was it cost 50 cents to buy that book previously. A lot of the sports card submissions that come in now are cards right out of the pack. They're immediately sent in. Are you getting a lot of comic books that have been never read, that have just been purchased, set aside, and then sent in order to get a, a, a maximum grade? Are they read once? We absolutely get books in on like our faster tiers that came out the day before. Sometimes comic shops, it's not even on the shelf. They'll just take it out of the box and send it to us. There's no shelf wear or anything like that. But comic collectors, if you're grading books and you're interested in it, typically they'll buy two copies, one to read and then one to keep in good condition and submit. How much tougher is comic book grading than sports card grading in terms of the time it takes and the, piece and the number of years of uh, preparation? Because uh, I believe comic book grading is harder. This is a conversation that we have with some of the card graders when we're just hanging around in the office and we talk to them. We look for different things. And I think that it's harder in some aspects and easier in some aspects. It's harder because it's a bigger format. We have to count pages. We're looking at multiple uh, pages of it. We do great books that have been restored. So we have to detect color touch or stuff like that. But when I talk to the guys in the card side, they have to have this photographic memory for what cards look like because there's so many fake cards out there. And that's something we deal with very rarely. There are fake comics out there, or not fake, but bootleg comics out there. But to me, it seems like it's a lot easier for us to detect those than it is for the card graders. 
Were, were you ever a card collector or were you comics from the start as a kid? When I was a kid, I was growing up during Pokemon. I, I collected Pokemon cards. I collected Magic the Gathering cards. So never sports cards, but some of the trading card games. Is there a, a level below which a comic should not be graded? In other words, a brand new card, <laughs> you wouldn't send it in if it's going to get less than a nine. But say if it's a really brand new card. With comic books, is the same thing? If it's got a crease or some kind of a blemish that's really obvious, is it not wise to grade? In Golden and Silver Age comic or comic books, you take what you can get, right? Because back then there was not that collecting mentality. Kids would just read comics and roll them up, put them in their back pocket. So those hold value pretty well. And the stuff that I deal with, the new books, if it's below a 9.8, the value drops off quite a bit. What a lot of people will do is send books in with a grade screen. So if it's not a 9.8, we won't grade it and we'll send it back to them raw. I'm curious, you had mentioned that you, you had dabbled in comics and cards a little bit in the past. I'm curious how that went. Well, I didn't. I didn't really dabble. I basically had, oh, okay. <laughs> I had a best friend in sixth grade who had comics and I had cards and we were good buddies, oh. we played basketball together. And I would try to convince him to get cards. And he said, no, I, I've already got all these great <laughs> comics. This is in the fifties or the late, very late fifties. And he had an older brother and had a trunk full of a lot of Superman stuff. I think in the 50s, no matter what you were collecting, if you held on to it and kept it in pretty good shape, you're probably, you probably did well. <laughs> but yeah, but I was always a sports guy. And this guy's a sports guy too, but he just, uh, and he, he was a great athlete. He was a really good basketball player. But for some reason, he didn't collect that much in the way of baseball cards or yeah, the basketball cards because the Fleers were coming out uh, 61, 62 at that point. And partly my dad had collected cards and of Gowdy's and play balls. And he, he hadn't really collected comics. And I don't know if my parents yeah. would have said, Hey, comics or just my parents were really into sports. Let's put it that way. So I really didn't collect very much. Nonsense. Sure. So then I won't say I didn't have a choice, but I, I, I <laughs> okay. Um, do you ever get in a battle with the graders or the other people up there at, at uh, Beckett media about why comics are better than cards? And I have all the arguments why cards are better than comics, but do, do you hold your own in saying that comics are better than cards. I have not had that conversation. Honestly, a lot of the guys, collectors at heart, so they also, they'll come over and talk to us about comics. Or being from Florida and living in Tampa, I'm a big Tampa Bay Lightning fan. So being in the office with so many sports fans these last two years has been fun because of the Lightning's success the last two years. Having people like that that I can talk to about the Lightning with was cool, instead of the comic guys who are not very into You're not into that as much, yeah. <laughs> Lightning are <laughs> coming on strong the last couple of years. When I was running the company, we were real big on cross training and making sure that when we had peak load problems, people were trained in more than one thing. It didn't really apply so much to grading, but I'm wondering with having card grader, autograph authenticators, as well as comic book graders all under one roof, if there's any economies of scale or cross training that would be helpful or the best practices that y'all are sharing in the IDing and the shipping and the handling and the logistics. So to what extent do you see an opportunity or is there any cross training going on now that I've been long gone? Yeah. Grading is so different. There's not a whole lot we can cross train there, but one of the things that was really great when we moved into the office is that some of the card graders have been doing it for so long when we were trying to develop like a training schedule or best practices for getting new people up to speed on comic books, they were very helpful with that. They've had it down to a science at this point. So David, we would rely on them to, yeah, David was extremely helpful with that. I, I had several meetings with him putting stuff together. Here's this paperwork that I've developed. Please use it as you want. And he was extremely helpful with that. Shipping, obviously, so those guys definitely have that down as well. <laughs> a lot of that stuff upscaled us when we moved to, to Texas because we were a smaller business. It's been very helpful. Also going to conventions, packing for conventions and stuff like that. A, a lot of stuff we were able to rely on the experience of the Beckett team over there. Do you have a, a huge backlog of the cards? I've been over there and Jeremy shown me that's just crazy number of cards here. Do you have a similar thing or do you have any ideas for how to whittle that down? <laughs> We do on a smaller scale. These last two years have been absolutely crazy with how many submissions we've been getting in. The collectibles market has exploded in a way that I, I would not have imagined. So we're definitely getting in a lot of comic books. We're, we're hiring a lot of people. We're trying to get everybody up to speed and train people for that kind of stuff. But it's pretty hard to keep up with the demand right now. Did I make a mistake when I had a few copies of the Baseball Card Monthly in the first issue, the light blue cover, that I got slabbed. 
And I think that was before you guys were there. I think they were just slabbed in this big, giant, heavy holder that really keeps mm. it protected. But I think it's just authentic. Would have gotten a good grade because I had a couple of personal copies. Was that a mistake? I don't necessarily think so, since we focus so much on comic books. But you don't do old Beckett magazines, do you? We have not. No. Then you can't read them. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's the complaint that people who are against slabbing always make is you can't read the comics anymore. Well, um, you could make a photocopy before you send it in. But the <laughs> thing is, the, it, it is a book. It's a comic book. It's, that's true. Yeah. And do you do graphic novels? To a certain dimension. They have to be able to fit inside our case. We definitely do graphic novels, though. Just not the bigger ones. We don't we don't do hardcover ones. Can you do 64 pages or what? Oh, yeah, yeah, easily. Yeah, we can do 64 pages. I, I really believe all collectibles have done well in the last two years because I think so. Phenomenon of sheltering in place and getting back to, to the basics. What did you think when BGS decided to acquire a comic grading company? What were your thoughts on that? Candidly? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's a really good example of something I wouldn't have done that probably is a good idea. It's not that I was so risk averse. But I had a focus. And every year we'd come up with a bunch of ideas. I really was more into starting things than I was buying things. That was my thing. But I was slow to get into the non-sport. I was slow to get into grading and and to get into comic book grading. That's probably something I wouldn't have done. But I think it was a good decision. It it just points out that uh, it's a feather in your cap. They saw something. We did buy a grading company coins, but they they mainly did cards. This was back 20 years ago. So it's not that we never bought a company, but we mainly like to start our own thing. Like you said, the learning curve for starting up grading comic books, I think is not trivial. I think it's significant. And even though we had all the, you know, equipment and, and, and the know-how in one sense, the specialized knowledge, these are expert driven things. And The other thing I didn't like to do, I won't say we never did it, but it was very rare that we would hire away somebody from somebody else. If we were going to start something, we were going to cherry pick somebody else's best employees and bring them over and then compete with them. It was more, we had a really strong team and I just thought we can figure this out. We can do it and we'll get it rolling. But again, feather in your cap, you had something they were looking for, not just you personally, but the system and your teammates and all that stuff. So I hate to say it, but maybe Daniel, in my mellowing, maybe I would have been fine with it a few years ago, but but I sold 16 and a half years ago. And at that point we had our hands full with uh, grading was really taken off, but it was just my time to find the next owner. Now they've gone on to a new ownership, which is very acquisitive. The the new ownership group loves to put companies together. My goal is that the uh, Beckett brand would remain strong and have high integrity and Appreciate your role in that. You would not have been brought in if you didn't have that. So thanks, Daniel Ertl. Keep up the great work with uh, CBCS. Again, I'm not a customer, but I'm a fan of what you're doing. But I've got my hands full with too many cards. You have some sports comics. I probably oh, bring them on down because not only does it get the grading and the authentication, but it gets the identification because some are better than others. I have some older ones that probably I should bring in. So yeah. let's leave it at that. I'll see right. <laughs> you down there one of these days. Thanks again, Daniel. Thanks, Thanks everybody for, for listening. On. We'll be back again tomorrow.